What up, Black and Blue fam? Welcome to the Black and Blue Review, where we break down the good, the bad, and the ugly of police interaction videos to give you a better understanding of what cops do or what they should be doing out there on the streets. My name is Dale, and I'm an actual police officer out here in California with over 25 years' experience in the business. I'm joined today, like on every Black and Blue Review, by a non-law enforcement member of the community to help us break down today's video. So Black and Blue fam, let's help me welcome to the show my girl tara hi Dell. thank you for having me it's good good to hear what, what you up to out there you're in texas right yes i am in texas so uh i'm enjoying the the great state of texas and celebrating a little bit of thanksgiving uh with friends and family and so yeah so at it getting ready for a holiday break but but all is well here so what about out in cali how are things going Cali is great. Cali is great. I'm waiting for it to cool down a little bit so we can, I mean, we don't really get the seasons out here in Southern California, but you know, I wanted to cool down and get rid of these 80 degree weather and all this already, but hey, <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, thank you for coming on to the show. I appreciate you. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, show us a video and you can give us your unfiltered, educated uh, opinion about what you see there and then we can chop it up here. And today's video comes to us from... Uh, since you are a college professor, this one comes from uh, Florida, the University of Central Florida out there in Orlando, where a police traffic stop by their police department turns into a foot pursuit. Dead. So let's uh, check this out. Step out. Come talk to me. You have anything on you? OK. This tag's coming back as stolen, man. I'm Sergeant Lark with the police department. Tag is coming back as stolen. Step over there for me, OK? Do you know anything about that? You have a license on you? I got my, I got everything in the car though. Okay, don't, don't go and reach for anything yet. Okay, Whose car door, is it? Man. You can open the door. Uh, yeah. You have any weapons in there? Okay. okay. Whose car is it? Mine. Okay. Why would the tag be coming back as stolen? Shit, I ain't gonna hold you. You know what? You sergeant. Yeah. Shit, why not? Right, you don't pull me. I'm about to do it for you. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's um, going on? All right, so... All right, so this is my really first one. So you can, can you see All right, me don't reach for anything. I just want you to see me. No, no, don't, don't, don't reach for nothing, okay? There you go. I just want you All right, let me pause it right here. And based on what you've seen so far, what, what, what are your kind of thoughts on what's going on here? So I think that the officer has gotten a report back that the vehicle is stolen based upon the license plate. So he is inquiring um, with the individual about what's going on. The individual's trying to explain and show the officer that he has registration and that it's not, in fact, a stolen vehicle. So, I mean, right now, I feel like it's the officer trying to better understand why the tags are coming back as stolen. So, and he's asking um, the individual about that. Yeah. What, what do you think about uh, their interaction where the officer is asking him not to do certain things, but <laughs> the gentleman is still doing those certain things? <laughs> well, so I would say I would say two things. I think one um, that you ought to listen to a police officer when they tell you not to do certain things. Yeah. Also, too, from a human uh, standpoint, he is trying to show the officer and the only way to, to show him that he has for papers what's in his car so he's he's listening to the officer and then also trying to be mindful of the fact that the author's trying officer is giving him instructions not to do something so the officer's trying to protect himself right he doesn't know what's in the car he's asking him does he have a weapon right so the officer is trying to be safe because he doesn't he doesn't know from Adam. He doesn't know the situation that he's that he's walking uh, into. Um, so I, I get it from the officer's point. I also get it from the individual here who is, you know, in his effort to explain, is not following <laughs> what yeah. the officer is telling exactly. him uh, yep. to do. But he's also trying right. to let him know that I don't have something in my car, right? That I, I'm not armed because he recognizes, I mean, he is a black man. So he recognizes that I want to try to let the officer know I'm not not here to harm you there's nothing in the car but yeah he, he's he's not following instructions so right. that's yeah, exactly true. all right let, let's continue so i'm okay. staying um i ain't gonna lie i'm staying i ain't i damn i still smell like coochie too um i'm staying right here on alafia this is w2 oh shit. No, no, don't, come back here come back here now i do want you to know who it is because okay. uh because i see the tag come back stolen you gonna think the car stole yeah that's you exactly can, what i think yeah i know you can run a vin number the vin number smith the, how you doing officer man? Hey, man, how are you doing? The VIN number is me. 
I just really just came to drop my girlfriend off. She stay right here, bro. I'm really going. This tag's been hitting our license plate readers all night, though. What do you mean? We have cameras on campus that pick up license plates, yeah. and it's been coming back stolen all night. So you can see, I, I came and I, I picked my girlfriend up. She stay right mm -hmm. in the towels. I'm going right back here on Alice. Oh. All right, so basically what's going on here, so the uh, this is the University of Central Florida, their police department, and they have what we call AALPRs, automatic license plate readers, on the campus. And when cars come and go, I'm sure you've seen it all all sorts of places, um, the reason the license plate and it came back stolen all night long, so now it's the daytime. So um, his story is is that he was going through there, you know, all last night because he was dropping off a girl that he was seeing, and, 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 you know, I cut out a, a bunch of this video and he, he was saying he smells like a certain thing because yeah. he actually has a, he has another girlfriend and he was cheating on his girlfriend, supposedly with this girl on the University of Central Florida campus. And he was going back and forth with her and he spent the night, all that sort of That's his story. I cut all that out. But let's uh, let's continue. Yeah, so you have any like that? Yeah, no. So you, you said you were going to be honest with me. So yeah. So here, here go my, I can show you my ID and everything like okay. that. You can run my VIN number. I'm going. Everything. To, oh, he will actually. Here go my VIN number. Here go my license plate. You can smell me. I still smell no, like coochie okay. vagina. Okay. 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 Remember, I don't know you. We're not friends yet. Okay. 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 I see you. You just got out there and did it for me, so I might as well be honest with you. Yeah. That's Officer Angle. Hang with him for a minute, okay? All right. Figure everything out. Thank you. Hmm. I, I told him. All right, let me pause this real quick. Um, so uh, the original officer went back to his car with the paperwork, right? And he's coming back. Did you notice what our what our guy over here is is doing? Let me run this back a little bit. You notice anything about his actions right now? What, what do you he think? looks he looks uncomfortable like he looks yeah he looks clearly uncomfortable he looks like he's you know distressed and so he's trying to manage um his stress he's got two officers that are there on the scene he you know they're telling them this uh you know maybe there's some angst too about him getting caught with you know what he was doing with the women so yeah he he looks like yeah he looks like he is in in distress and so he's trying to he's trying to manage that so he's walking around he's you know he's okay. making movement so so yeah 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 uh, let, let me tell you from my perspective what it looks like is he's stretching oh uh, okay looks like he's preparing I, I, okay for something and in my line of work allowing this gentleman for one just to be walking around because i'm sure you've seen uh mm -hmm. you know in, in videos and movies mm -hmm. and all that um mm -hmm. this isn't how we allow people to act during the traffic stop we either sit them down or they're you know in one place this this mm -hmm. gentleman right here has got too much uh control mm -hmm. over the situation and not the police so mm -hmm. let's let's continue okay yeah yeah so can i guess you got no insurance right yeah, they, they, I ain't gonna lie, they, they insurance last month, and I know I'm not really supposed to be driving. Okay. I, I know. I, I appreciate I, you being honest with me. Yeah, because it don't make no sense, bro. I, I, no, I, I already got yeah. you. Yeah, so. it, it don't make no sense, but, um... Because so. you got a warrant for your rights. Don't run! <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get tased! Okay, so, uh... What, what do you think? What do you think about that? The whole situation there. So, all right. So clearly you have a situation that's escalated. Um, it's gone from, you know, he gets pulled over because of the, uh, uh, the tags are coming back as stolen. You know, he's got the situation with his girlfriend. Now there's a warrant for his arrest. And so he just, you know, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to go to jail. <laughs> so um, it, at that point, he thinks his out is, you know, to run. Now he's got on flip flops. And I realized you said that he was stressed. But I'm like, dude. And you, hey, you're just, hey. You're people, just, <laughs> catch yeah, catch you're me running just, in them flip flops, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, was like, you're just, I was like, you're just not going to get far. 
you know, and then the officer is like, okay, you know, he, he warns, he's like, okay, now you're going to get tased. And that, that brings in a whole nother set, you know, of variables. And I'll just tell you because I was just watching, there's a story that's been circulating on cable news about um, a deacon in Atlanta involved in a traffic stop. Again, circumstances are different. He's involved in a traffic stop. He said it wasn't his fault. Um, he gets into it, won't comply, gets the situation off. He gets tased. And family. And it's, you know, so it's just, so I have just apprehension about tasing people. Um, I realize that it, maybe it's better than obviously shooting somebody. I mean, I can, I can make that distinction, but now in my head, I'm like, you know, dude, like not only, I know you don't want to go to jail, but like running from the officers, getting tased and like, what does all that manifest? And you're running across a busy street. Like, do you risk, like, you know, you go from <laughs> the situation you're in, to, you know, now you could be maimed, killed, you know what I mean? But like, clearly all rational thought is out of the window. Um, you know, for for this particular individual, the only thing that's in his favor right now is that he's kind of he's not lying completely. So he, he yeah. six years. Yeah, we'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll circle like, yeah. we'll circle back on on to that yeah. <laughs> um, whether or not he's lying here in a minute. But I want to I want to yeah. get back to the the whole issue in the first place mm -hmm. was the officers ran the plate and it came back stolen. Right. Um, at least out here in California, I would assume Florida is the same. Orlando's not a small city. Um, mm -hmm. That if people are in a stolen car, there's a pretty good chance that they've got guns or, mm -hmm. you know, they've got warrants. They don't want to go to jail, mm -hmm. what have you. Mm -hmm. So we as the officers, as, as crass as it may sound, we need to take control of that situation mm -hmm. from the jump. And this officer mm -hmm. didn't. He allowed this dude to, to walk around freely, to go in and mm -hmm. out of the car, not knowing what's in the car. And mm -hmm. I know we talked about earlier, you, you, you think he was just trying to, to show the officer that, you know, he's, he's, you know, not a threat. He mm -hmm. came up to him and said, Hey, smell me. All that. You know, he's trying to befriend this officer. And we see how that ended up. Mm -hmm. The dude ran, the dude ran. Um, consequently, the end of this video, they never caught this dude. He got away. He got away. So uh, that could have been alleviated from, from the jump. If they would have said, okay, mm -hmm. sit down on this curb Let's figure it out. If, if this car is not stolen, we'll figure that out too. But for now, mm -hmm. sit down on the curb while we figure out what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So let me, uh, let me, let me show you. Um, you said, you know, maybe this gentleman wasn't lying and, and this, that, and the other, let's, let's throw a twist into this and uh, show you okay. this next video here. Uh, All right. right here. Check this out. This is Dayton Veal, the man accused of opening fire on two Orlando police officers. Just four months ago, Veal was locked up in the Orange County jail. According to authorities, Veal, driving this red Ford Fusion, headed to a Central Florida high school and picked up an underage girl. Veal brought her here to Trotters Park in Orlando, where investigators say he repeatedly raped her and then drove her back to school. At the time of his arrest for sexual battery, Veal was under the supervision of the Florida Department of Corrections, serving probation for several previous crimes, including aggravated assault, arson, and trespassing. Yet, despite being on probation, a judge allowed Veal to be released from jail on a $125,000 bond while awaiting trial for the rape. Two months later, court records show Veal cut off his ankle bracelet monitor and disappeared. Warrants were issued for Veal's arrest, but authorities could not find him until June 30th, when Veal's red Ford Fusion was spotted at UCF. Campus police pulled over the car and tried to arrest Veal, but court records show he ran away, fleeing on foot. A UCF police officer stayed with the car. However, Veal was able to get back into his vehicle and drive away from the traffic stop at a high rate of speed. Once again, Veal had vanished. Two weeks later, police say Veal's red Ford Fusion was spotted in Miami, where it was used as a getaway car in a murder. On Friday night, two Orlando police officers found that car wanted in the Miami murder. That's when authorities say Veal opened fire on the officers critically wounding both of them all right so now <laughs> now where, where, where do you think we are now well so i so obviously that's all you know context and additional information is consequential right so you know obviously the officers didn't have all of that historical detail when they actually you know pulled him over because one of the things i was um i know you ran the plates 
but they never it didn't often never got to where they actually had his identification. And I don't know how this would work in Florida, but where they could have actually run his driver's license and then all of that criminal history. Um, yeah, I, I, think they did. I think they did I eventually know. when it, when they found out he had a warrant and they wanted to contact him and then put him under arrest for the warrant. If you heard that, then that's okay. when he took off. So eventually okay. they did get that info. Okay. So, so, um, so at that point in time, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're trying to obviously, you know, detain him, but I guess going back to your point, you know, it's just, you don't know what you are encountering, you know, when an officer is actually making a stop. Um, and he seemed reasonable enough. Again, I'm, I'm glad that I don't do this for a living. Um, cause clearly <laughs> judging human behavior, and who people are and what their intentions are is very difficult. And so that's a great uh, example of that here because, again, he presents himself. If you look at, obviously, what the records are showing in terms of his um, criminality and what he presents here, that like two different people, like the person that opened fire, critically wounded, um, the officer doesn't appear to be that person that's in this video. But clearly, right, I mean, that's a part of you know, your ability, I guess, um, you know, to be able to, um, you know, not, um, you know, present a threat to officers and so get away essentially what um, he was able to do. I, I think it's, I think it's a great illustration of just one, how difficult um, policing is. I think two, um, it would be interesting to know too here, just contextually, like you have, I didn't see the race of the, of the officer that actually pulled him over. It, the second officer on the on the Hassan was either Hispanic or white. And so I'm just I just think about like police interactions. And so given just the context um, that that police officers are in, again, it doesn't mean that you move away from your training, but do you make some kind of are you more careful in terms of how you you interact? You know what I mean? Where maybe yeah. you don't. Yeah. The point that you were making earlier about taking control of the situation, doing those things, and maybe in this instance, they made too much allowance for how they actually handle it. But I'm also not oblivious to the contextual factors that obviously police officers, you know, have to navigate You've got, um, what appear to be too, you know, um, uh, white or or maybe perhaps um, identifying as white officers. Yeah. 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 A lot of those things, a lot of those things can be can be alleviated if you act professionally. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, like I said, mm -hmm. if you send them down on the curb, there's two ways you mm -hmm. could do it. You could say, "Sit your a on the curb," right? You could do with that, or mm -hmm. you could say, "Sir, right. can you just have a seat here while we figure this all out." And mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and and that's the difference between the things. Right. You're still taking control of the situation, making mm -hmm. sure you're safe, that uh, your partners are safe, and even this guy is safe. Right. Regardless of what he he's intending to do, because mm -hmm. like I said, when I saw him. Back there, you know, it looks like he was stretching. He was ready mm -hmm. to, to bolt if, mm -hmm. if need be. And obviously he was ready for it mm -hmm. in, in his flip flops. <laughs> yeah, right. In his flip flops. And again, his movements, when you said stretching, I was like, okay, I snatched like that. And I ran track. So, <laughs> so it, <laughs> it never occurred to me <laughs> that he was yeah, actually he, stretching. <laughs> yeah, he was getting ready. He was thinking, okay, which way am I going to go with this dude? You know, and, and and him being familiar with the officer, even though the officer told him, hey, I don't know you. We're not friends yet. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that's what he was going to, trying to keep the uh, officer off guard, be familiar mm -hmm. with him, trying to make mm -hmm. him think that, you know, there's no threat here when mm -hmm. obviously they're just Clearly there was. So. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's, it, yeah, it, you guys have a tough job. So, uh, <laughs> but, but I think, but I also think too, right. I mean, this is obviously great for, you know, for a civilian like me, that's not in law enforcement, but I also think, um, you know, it's a great, um, you know, training tool uh, for officers. I think about our own cadets um, at our police academy um, at the college and just about, you know, these interactions and how they're being trained to, to deal with these uh, circumstances. But, um, you know, it's it's hard it, it's really difficult uh, to be able to to figure out the right thing to do in in these varied situations that uh, officers are faced with absolutely hey tara hey i appreciate you coming on and going through this tough video and and seeing both sides of that and, and hey I, I really appreciate it this this was good this is good 
love it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much um, for the invitation. And again, just for the perspective taking, I think it's really important um, just for people to, to be able to look at these situations because it's easy to play, you know, Monday morning uh, quarterbacking. It's easy to, you know, draw judgments, but you weren't there. And again, these are split second decisions um, that have to be made. And you're trying to judge character and the environment and all those contextual factors. Um, you know, simultaneously. So it's it's not easy work, but this is great insight um, for for all that are involved um, in, in policing. No doubt. All right. All right. You enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so all much right. for having me. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs>